G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It's Jesse here coming to you from day three of self-isolation as evidenced by my self-isolation beard. Hope you guys are all going well. I've got my memory card dropped off to my house, thankfully, uh, so I can get to make some normal videos again. I'm gonna be doing a different kind of video today. Every now and then I do get the question from subscribers who wanna know, uh, what my advice is for starting a YouTube channel. That's kind of inspired me to make a video on my five best tips for starting an AFL YouTube channel. Now, this is good advice for any YouTube channel really, but I'm gonna make it specific to an AFL context as much as I can. It does seem like in the last few months or even the last year or so, we've seen some really good, young, talented YouTubers pop up in the AFL scene and we wanna see them succeed. So hopefully this video can provide some value to someone out there. If you guys like the idea, I'm considering making more YouTube help content on my other channel, channel Jesse Thomas. So if you're not subscribed to that, please go check that out. Uh, but today I decided to put this one on True Footy because fuck, I really need the views. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. From the top, five tips for starting an AFL YouTube channel. The first one I would say is stick as best as possible to your niche. Now, YouTube really likes channels that are focused on one sort of area and variety channels, you might have noticed, unless they're YouTube celebrities, they're not doing as well as maybe they once were. And the reason for that is YouTube really likes when it knows how to categorize your video. So for instance, if you're making an AFL video one week and then you know your second video is a Finding Dory Rev movie review, I don't know why that came into my head. The, the audiences who watch that are unlikely to be similar and YouTube pretty much just gonna show your AFL videos to the people that normally watch your AFL videos and you're finding Dory in movie reviews. It's gonna have a harder time showing that to your subscribers. So all I can really say is for that one, as best as you can, try and focus your channel on a particular niche. Now, I have a second channel for all the kind of other stuff I want to put out, so I have some FIFA stuff. I did a reaction to KSI and Logan Paul. The reason I did that is I just want that channel for that kind of stuff, because on True Footy, if I put it up there, frankly, it just wouldn't do as well. So to sum that point up, it's best to stay as niche as possible. The second biggest point of advice I can give you is to go through and what, look at what channels are successful, particularly in the AFL scene, and observe what is doing well. To give you one really juicy example, predictions videos go really well. I think because they're easily consumable and sort of a younger audience likes to watch that. Reaction videos do really well on YouTube. For instance, if you look on my channel, I did a video reacting to the West Coast Eagles new team song, and that got more views than my Adam Simpson documentary, which took about three weeks to make, and that's just how YouTube goes, unfortunately. Ranking videos, tier making videos, those videos all do really well. So while I'm not saying go to other people's channels and just copy exactly what they do, there's no harm in looking at the format that works well and adopting it to your own channel. Similarly, it's worth noting as well, for instance, that podcasts and longer format content aren't going to do well early. I think I can say now from my own experience, it was probably a mistake to make our first five videos or podcasts because A, nobody cares who we were, nobody cared who we were in the first five podcasts, nobody knew who we were, but also longer format videos struggle to get pushed out as well. So I would recommend sort of looking what does well, making that kind of content. And then over time, once you have a bit of an audience, if you want to do podcasting or anything like that, do that a bit later. Someone like Caden McDonald only started his podcast in 2019. I think that's like his fourth or fifth year of YouTube. Correct me if I'm wrong. One thing I personally did to sort of build an audience as well early on in the piece was make highlight videos and pump up videos. I've kind of gone away from doing that other than my sort of promo vids that I do a few times a year. Uh, but generally, that's a really good way to sort of develop an audience. My third tip is probably the most boring one for you, but I, I really recommend it, and that is to spend time learning the YouTube algorithm. Now, when I started YouTube, I watched like tens of hours of sort of seminars. You can find all this stuff on YouTube of breaking down exactly how the algorithm works. I don't think you necessarily have to do that, but it's good to form a basis of understanding so that you can progress your channel making the right strategic moves. To break down the algorithm really simply for you, I think it's all about average watch time per thousand impressions. An impression is whenever anyone sees your thumbnail on the screen. So instead of like wrapping your head around that, you just need to understand that people need to click your video, not scroll past it, 
which means your thumbnail is really important, but also they need to stay watching your video. So obviously clickbait stuff is kind of out the window now. You used to get rewarded just for views. If you just had a nice thumbnail and people clicked your video and it was crap, I think you used to get rewarded more then now if somebody clicks your video and it's not what they're expecting, then your watch time's only five seconds for that impression. So if you get what I'm saying, that is really important thing to understand. Two other little tips that I'll add right now is that it's important to drive traffic from other sources. And this is something that Young King Cookson and Cade McDonald do really well. They drive traffic from their other sources. In fact, the pair is the same from Instagram and Twitter. YouTube likes it when you bring people from other websites onto your channel. It'll actually boost you in the algorithm. The other final point I'll make is probably the most important thing, and that is to make sure your titles are perfect. Will N.E. is a big YouTuber in the UK. He's, uh, he's pretty famous. I remember him saying once that he actually comes up with his titles and thumbnails before he even starts making the video. I don't think you necessarily need to be like that. You should create the kind of content that you want to create, but you need to be smart with your titles. The best advice I can give is make sure if it's an AFL channel, you're putting AFL in as much in all of your titles really, even if it's just in brackets, because YouTube needs to understand this is an AFL video and needs to show it to people who are interested in AFL. AFL videos. So that's probably the biggest mistake I see young you or new YouTubers rather uh, when they start their channel they're not putting AFL in the title and it's costing them views. My fourth tip is a little bit vanilla but it is so important and that is just simply be consistent. Now you don't need to upload daily. I would recommend I think the perfect amount supposedly in terms of the algorithm is three times a week but if you can commit to yourself to upload at least once a week, you will see some growth in your channel. Now, I don't mean upload blindly. It is important to put yourself out there and not be afraid of failing, but there will be eventually a downside if you're uploading lots of videos that aren't doing well. I actually see a lot of good YouTubers out there who've, who've gotten themselves to a really good standard, but because they upload too often and it's not focused enough or they're not doing something right in terms of their titles, they're, they're basically never, once you reach a certain point where you're only getting like 10, 20, 30 views on a video, if you've got 50 videos, YouTube pretty much thinks that people aren't interested in your content. So there's a balance there. The other upshot of being consistent is that you will upskill and this is so important and it's something you need to think about consciously as well. While you're producing content, it's important to actually get better at producing that content. Learn from your mistakes, take the feedback on board. For me, something that took probably too long is to improve the audio visual quality of my videos, uh, but also the thumbnails as well. So I'll give people two programs to use that are free. They're in fact, they're in browser programs. For the thumbnails, I would use canva.com. It's a really simple program. And also photop.com. I'll leave the link to that in the description. Between these two sites, that's all I use for making my thumbnails. And if you check them out, it might go some way to improving your own thumbnails too. My fifth tip for you is important as well, and it's being involved in the AFL community. So try as much as you can to respond to people who take the time to comment on your video, building a sort of relationship with your subscribers. That's something I've done over the last two years and I like to think I've made some friends out of it which is you know a really good plus but also um, that also it's really important to build the sort of community vibe in terms of your channel as well. I would also recommend showing support for other YouTubers doing the same thing within the AFL community. A, it's a great way to build friendships and I believe it's really important to be positive with each other and not be too competitive, but equally you'll actually get some benefit for your channel as well because collaborations, etc., are a really good way to drive traffic. But that's it guys, those are five tips to start your AFL channel. Now, if you enjoyed this content, let me know in the comments. It's something I've wanted to do for a little while now, uh, but I haven't actually had the time to put that together. So if it's something you're interested in, let me know. If it's something you're not interested in, maybe it's something I'll put on my Jesse Thomas channel, which I'd really appreciate you checking out in the description as well. Now, as I said before, I've got about 10 days left on this isolation journey. So I've got plenty of time to make content, guys. Hoping to do the Caden McDonald podcast very soon over Skype. Um, but any other ideas you have for content that you want me to do, I really appreciate it in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you somewhere on YouTube very soon. Cheers.